I have a question. Why does every personal website these days look like this? So I'm talking about this blank white page. Sometimes it's a black page, but it always has maybe two sentences or two paragraphs on here talking about yourself. Then you have a picture of that person. And finally, most importantly, you have a link to all of their social media. So as you can probably guess, this is the only page on the website. And if you click on this, it takes me to my YouTube. This is my GitHub and this is just my email address. So what is this website even? It is basically just a glorified business card that I have here. And this was my website for the past couple of years. And let's be honest, it really had absolutely no purpose in ever existing. I think the only reason I actually had my own website is because I knew I was supposed to. That seems like the thing that a professional technology YouTuber should have, right? Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll even see a blog on some of these websites. Maybe it'll have three or four or five posts. And of course, the last time they posted is over three years ago. But that is the state of the personal website. Almost everybody I know who has a personal website, it always looks like this. And I understand why a lot of people don't really put much on their own website anymore. It's because it's much more satisfying to post it somewhere else. Like if you post your thoughts on Twitter instead of your blog, then you get all of the validation of likes and retweets. It's very instantly gratifying. I'm even guilty of this. Yes, I know I'm a big hypocrite because I've been posting YouTube videos instead of actually posting any content on my website. And at this point, you really don't need your website for anything. If you want to share photos that you've taken, that's what Instagram is for. If you want your resume, that's what LinkedIn is for. And so it kind of makes sense just to have your homepage as just a bunch of links to different social medias that you use. And some people have even taken this to its logical conclusion. And if you type in their website, it'll just redirect to their LinkedIn page. I'm sure you've probably seen that before, but it is kind of sad. And the reason it's sad is because I've recently kind of fallen in love with the personal website again. So I've been kind of exploring the web a little bit and finding some of these websites that are still around and they actually do still have content, believe it or not. And it can be so much more than this. So one website that I've known about for a long time, and you've probably seen this before, but it is Derek Sivers page. And if you want to know about him, he has an about page. He has books that he's written. He has articles dating back maybe 15 years. He has book notes from the last 360 books that he's read. And so you can just literally spend all day on this website. And that's what I really love about it. You can really get lost and see all of his notes on everything that he's ever read. There is just a ton of content on here and I really like it. He has this huge tech independence guide where he teaches you how to have your own server, create your own website so you're not beholden to any of these social medias. And another personal website I like is this one. I've recently been reading this guy's content, Jared White. He has a whole bunch of things. He has photos on his website. Wow, he actually has photos instead of just putting it on Instagram like everybody does. But this website has a lot of his personality. You can find out what he really thinks, what he really believes. He has a whole bunch of essays and links and thoughts and projects and podcast. And like I said, there's just a ton of content on this website. You can really get lost here. One more that everybody knows of is Luke Smith's webpage. You can see his personal library of all of the books that he owns. That is pretty cool. So maybe you're looking for a good book to read. You can see some of the books that he has read before. You can also see all of his posts that he's written about a whole bunch of different subjects. He has different links to projects. He has different websites about a whole bunch of different things about how to set up your own website. He has a link for his podcast, a cooking website. And so all of these websites, when I was just looking around at these, these just put my website to shame. Looking back at this website, it looks like a pretty poor substitute for those. And so I got to thinking, why don't I have any content on this website? Why doesn't anybody have any content on their website? Because yes, social media is cool. I get that. You can post things and have everybody see them and like them. But one of the biggest things that we lost with social media, instead of having our own websites, is a lot of the creativity. So I know there's a whole bunch of reasons to have your own website and other people have said it better than I can. Like, for example, you can't be censored. So if you want to talk about a sensitive subject, you can't really talk about that on something like YouTube. 
And so you can have your own website and talk about whatever you want, talk about anything controversial that you want. You're not going to get banned or shadow banned or anything like that. You don't have to be beholden to all of these rules and regulations that are constantly changing on all of these platforms. And if you have something like an email list, you kind of own those email addresses and you can communicate with them. You can send them emails whenever you want and they will actually appear in their inbox instead of something like YouTube. And if YouTube makes some algorithm tweak, then I can maybe just lose half of my audience in a single day. Those are the kinds of things that you don't have control over whenever you don't own the platform. Maybe Facebook will make some change that if you want to keep talking to your followers, then you have to pay them an extra $5 a month. And that's something that you just have to grin and bear with. And so all of those are great reasons why you should have your own website. But like I said, it's not even the biggest reason for me. I just like the creativity of being able to have your own website. So that's why I recently kind of redid my website. And it's not that much, but I do have a lot more here than I used to. And so I started writing my blog again, so I'm actually going to have posts here. So if this does sound interesting, then you can subscribe via RSS. And I'm trying to have a whole bunch of different content here. I want to have some book reviews of some books that I read in the future. Instead of just these three icons of GitHub, YouTube, and Contact Me, I want to do a little bit more with this website. And I also want to encourage you to do the same. So if you've had a personal website that is kind of languishing, in this state that I talked about before, where it's just nothing more than a glorified business card, then I would really encourage you to actually do something and share your personality with your website. It doesn't just have to be about your professional life. A lot of people seem to think that the only reason why you would ever need your own website is if maybe you're looking for a job and you want to look very professional, you want to showcase your portfolio if you're making websites or something like that. But it doesn't really have to be just that. I really like the creativity that I've seen with these other websites that I've shown you. And so don't just show off your professional life. It's okay to kind of show your real personality and maybe show what you're interested in. I don't know, maybe you can talk about movies that you like or philosophical thoughts that you have or black and white photos that you take or some of the weird hobbies that you have. The sky is really the limit with having your own personal website. That's why I really encourage a lot of other people to do this. Now, I'm probably not the best person to talk about this because my website is pretty empty right now. There's not a whole lot of content on here. I do want to add more in the future. But in my opinion, I think that the personal website is an underused art form that really needs to come back. And it's probably the most authentic platform that you can use because you don't have to be professional like on LinkedIn. You don't have to post the perfect photo like on Instagram. You don't have to be advertiser friendly like you do on YouTube, but you can just express your true authentic self. Okay, now I'm starting to sound like a hippie, but I think you know what I mean. And I would encourage you to have your own website, even if you think that you don't really have anything to say. If you've ever posted anything on social media, then you do have something to say. And I think that organizing your thoughts onto a website that you control is a very valuable experience that more people should do because I've done a lot of complaining on this channel about the state of the modern web and about all of these social medias. But instead of just complaining about these things, let's come up with an actual solution. And I'm trying to do my part, however small it may be, in kind of bringing back the old spirit of the internet. If you like the video, subscribe via RSS, of course.